Welcome to the B-Side Word. We're a group of friends from around the world who discuss interesting articles. I'm Emma. I'm here with... Devin. And... CJ. And... Maxi. Okay, so this next article I have titled Bugs on a Plane. So an Air Transat, an Air Transit flight from London Gatwick to Vancouver was delayed for 24 hours because it needed to be fumigated. Okay, so there, I think they had boarded. A lady noticed a bug fall from above from the overhead baggage thing. Did you say fall? Yeah, onto the seat next to her. And then I think some others noticed bugs coming out from her over, overhead as well. And there was an infestation what bug was in it? the overhead baggage. And I was like, what the heck? It didn't say what bug. I am thinking cockroach. Or maggots. <laughs> oh. I love it when we do this. Yuck. It maggots. Could, could be maggots. Inf- oh, God. That's ants? worse. Ants. Well, funny you say about ants because there has been an... Uh, so, okay. So after I heard that story, I was like, hmm, does this happen a lot? So apparently, I don't think it's like extra common, but it definitely does happen. There has been an infestation on a United Airlines flight. CJ's two from two today. <laughs> 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 so imagine you're sat there. Imagine it's halfway through the flight, right? And you're sat there and all you see is ants coming out. Like first you go, oh. you know, when you, when you hit one off your leg and then all you can feel is like your leg sort of like tingly. You just feel like, oh, they're everywhere. But they actually are. Can you imagine that? Or you're sleeping and yeah, there's yeah, ants stuck. It's, yeah. <laughs> Anything crawling. Yeah, anyway, yeah, continue. Okay. This, this, this Mumbai-bound flight, this man found a large cockroach in his meal. What? Extra protein. Yeah. But apparently <laughs> the <protein>. airline <laughs> food... Was it on the way to China or something? Was it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Was it deep fried? <laughs> Yummy. But the airline <laughs> food is supposedly... <laughs> quite a bit better than you out like if you went out and had like street food or like even some takeaways because there's so much regulation and like checking yeah only one cockroach per meal oh <laughs> and then you know what is another big thing bed bugs is that real yep. yeah yeah so bed bugs are real bed yeah. bugs on i thought it was something that told kids like so that they Move around a lot. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Yeah. yeah. No, but they are actually real. That, that would make you move more, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't it? <laughs> and There's bed bugs in your bed. Don't so move. Like, uh, <laughs> oh. What? <laughs> First off, I'm not going in my bed. <laughs> no, but they don't say, they go, good night, 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 sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Yeah. Yeah, for us, the kids think. What? It is. Well, that's what you say just because it rhymes, but it's true. Oh, so there's actually bed bugs. Yeah. <laughs> Like if you go to like... What do they look like, these bed bugs? You can see them with the naked eye, I think. Well, I'm not just on my eye. Yeah. They look disgusting okay. if you see them through a micro microscope. Yeah, disgusting. Um, so Air India, British Airways, United Airlines, probably others have bed bugs, even in business class. You're not getting away with it just because you're in business class, by the way. Yeah. So... But there's yeah. no bids. No, it's like so... They So if you've been somewhere and you've stayed in like a crappy motel, not even a crappy, just somewhere that has being infested with bed bugs. And remember, so if you have got them from somewhere, they are now in your clothes. They are now in your suitcase. You transport them somewhere else and they go there. So you can pick them up from other people. And and you can't, it's so difficult to get rid of. Apparently you have to like burn your clothes. Well, no, throw your clothes (laughs) away. (laughs) Like throw your clothes away. Die, mother. (laughs) Awesome. Is it a good environment then? I guess, because I was thinking, does that not happen on all public transport? Yeah. But maybe Probably like does, but I trains think and stuff is too like hustly bustly. Maybe it's not a good environment for them. Where planes are quite calm, aren't they? Relatively. Oh, speaking. I don't think it's the fact. I think it's just so, um, maybe the length, maybe the fabric. Maybe see, that it is on trains if it's if it's like in the fabric because they like fabric. So right? I would have thought they would have sprayed a plane of like some kind of pesticide so they don't transport bugs native to like one country to another. They probably do, but infestations are probably because bound that, that, to that could happen. cause like, you know, damage to the um environment or that country. Yeah, but how if you're just going internal, like um domestic flight, like within Amer- America? Still, every area has like, like. Are oh, you just guessing, or are no, you? No, no. I assume like like let's say, 
Sydney we have a certain kind, like Queensland have Kang toads, correct? Yeah. Yeah. We don't really have them in New South Wales. Yeah. So like, d- d- they transport them here, so and then, yeah, then they we can get an transport. infestation, and that would destroy our, that would destroy our ecosystem. You, That's why Australia is so are, strict. Are they? Uh, do they fumigate air, airplanes in Australia? I, s- I assume they would. You I would assume, assume they, they would do. do. No, more. can we look it up? Are we, we're just assuming. We could assume all day. Okay, let's have a look. No, we just... Fumigating planes. So apparently, you should never actually use the aeroplanes pillow, like pillow, ca- like pillow that they give you, and blanket. And apparently, frequent flyers know this, so they bring their own. They bring their own pillow. And if you have brought your own pillowcase or whatever, like little travel one, like you've got to just really wash that on high when you get back home. And by itself, not with any other. No, and by itself, hundred percent. City advantage being bold doesn't bother me. What do you mean? And no bugs going on my. No, head. but it's going to go in your clo- in your clothes and stuff like about? that. Talking about what? What do you mean? It's not going to bite you. Of course, it's going to bite you. That's what. That's what they do. They eat. They feed on blood. That's what they live in your bed. And it's they not eat their blood. hair. That's yeah, they like and your skin and your blood and your. That's well, right. dust mites is skin. Hey. Yuck. Yeah. I don't know, but uh, bed bug. You're, well, everyone's itching. It's like now. having a facial. <laughs> oh, would you do? You just might. You just maybe think. CJ. Would you do that thing where you put your feet in the water and the fish like I've take seen off that. all the? I've seen that the dead skin. Oh, I'll give it a go. That's. I think in Singapore that's big. Let's go to Singapore. Mm. Okay, I'll go to Singapore just for the food. Let's go to Singapore. If you're, already, if, that you're, that if you're paying <laughs> to go to Singapore <laughs> for me to stick my feet if into you the skip thing, the queue, we'll, we'll go. go to Singapore. <laughs> Right? I'm happy. Would you leave your feet in there, Dev? You? I'd leave it in there. What? Yeah. You're squeamish. I'm such a daredevil. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> daredevil. Let's be perfectly honest. You'd be putting your feet like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, CG, go first. CG, yeah. go first. Tell me how it feels. And then you send, send, him, send him a love heart for motivation. Yeah. <laughs> send him a message. Well... <laughs> the annoying thing about this article is I'd never thought about infestation on planes, right? And now I feel like every time I'm going to get on a plane, I'm going to be thinking, oh, no, I don't want your blanket. Or like, I'm just going to be really conscious of it. I don't know. Um, well, it says, I just I just opened another article and it says, uh, uh, like it says, we tend to think bed bugs as living only in beds. That's what the name suggests, right? We're wrong. Bedbugs can hang out in any bit of fabric furniture, including your sofa, your office chair, and the seats on buses and the tube. There you so go. Like, <laughs> oh, they're uh, yeah. so yuck. But no, <laughs> apparently, like um, on that business class thing, um, the lady and her daughter got off, and they were all like blood stains and stuff like that. Basically, the whole article was that there's bad things on planes, besides snakes. Max facts. Max facts. Max facts. According to Bloomberg, in 2016, how much money in America was lost because pennies have just been accidentally lost, forgotten, oh. uh, etc. I ha- I'm sure at some stage in my life I've heard this. Five million. One billion. Over what That's period? outrageous, Siege. That's so <laughs> outrageous, CJ. Is this I'm like scared. ever in life? <laughs> that, that is so outrageous. <laughs> what do you reckon, Em? In, in pennies, though, not just change, pennies. In the history of pennies' existence. In the history of pennies in 2016. So I wouldn't really call it history, but... In 2016, in one year period, in 12 months... Oh, 12 uh, months. The US government estimated how many are lost obviously people save stuff in p banks and stuff but they estimated this is what is lost oh in a 12 month period um let's just do simple maths 12 oh come on just pick a number 0.5 no i like 12 it's also the date of my birthday and he said 12 month period just weathering whether to do million or trillion i'll do million Trillion. Well, what about billion? You could go straight from <laughs> <laughs> straight from million to trillion. <laughs> wow, I thought I was extreme. <laughs> you just killed me. I'm not sure if it's twelve million to twelve trillion. <laughs> oh man! You looked 
at me funny for saying one billion. What's the look you're gonna give M? It's horror <laughs> judging. <laughs> I forgot about billion. <laughs> okay. So so CJ's saying one billion. <laughs> uh oh. Emmy is saying twelve trillion million. <laughs> or mil, trillion. Mil, twelve mil. trillion. And I said and Dev is five saying million. Five it is sixty two million dollars. Oh, oh. I was close every this. year. You were no, you weren't. Yeah, you were a whole food billion off it. <laughs> Which is called, or he self-titled it, Generational Education. Did you guys get to read this at all? No, I'm not on social media. <laughs> so... Apparently, hundreds of baby boomers are now taking classes at the University of Minnesota. It's part of this. This is a tweet, by the way. So this was on NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. And it's part of a senior citizen education program. And it costs $10 per credit. $10. I don't know what that means. Okay. So we're talking about the U.S. Oh, credit is like your um, unit. I'm thinking that's what they mean. Yep. $10 a credit. Okay. Perhaps. Yeah. I don't quite know. I was going to say that credit's expensive. Yeah. You buy two credits, 20 bucks. I'm not sure. I think it's like uh, 120 credits to pass like a year at university. Okay. Well, yeah. So for me, I get my unit is worth six credit points. Okay. But I pay for the unit, not per credit. So okay. I don't know how they do yeah. it in America. Okay. But it's $10 so a some credit. Some are worth more, 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 credits more credits than others. Okay. Right. They do it per credit. Right. So that tweet was sent and the backlash, guys. The backlash. Oh, there was backlash. Backlash. Major backlash. I'll read some of them, okay? Let's have a look. Hmm. Okay. Let me just find a good one. Because I read about five minutes. Actually, probably read ten minutes of them, to be honest. Um. And what do they charge people my daughter's age? The ones who actually need the education? That's one example. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure if she read it that way, but, but Emma <laughs> said it, it sounded like she's a bitch. <laughs> 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 I didn't realize Ed, Emma went into quote mode. I thought she was just talking. Yeah, <laughs> she might have said, "I wonder how much they charge people my daughter's age," because she wants to put her in there, right? But the way Emma said is like, "Oh my god, I wonder how much they charge people my daughter's age." Here's like, another you know? one <laughs> quote. So, no student loan debt for these folks who could really afford to pay the real cost. End quote. Of course, there's no loan. They're, they're old. They don't have got much life left. You're not gonna get your money back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is the most <laughs> entitled yeah, boomer. Yeah, mm-hmm. Wasn't a judging mm-hmm. move. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. This is the most entitled boomer, sorry repeating myself, thing I have ever heard. College should cost this much for everyone. Another one. But because millennials have a full life ahead of them to pay off the debt, it's fine to charge them over 900 a credit. God bless America. So I guess it's over 900 a credit for your usual straight out. Basically what they're saying is how can you um, charge these kids coming straight out of high school 900 plus a credit who have literally no money Uh, and then they're in debt for years and years. Can I just say this $900 a credit, right? Whatever they charge these kids, I think it's freaking it's freaking crazy in the way that they... I don't know anything about their system. I don't know how they do uh, the debts and stuff, but apparently they're in debt forever, right? A long time. Which is crazy. This is stupid to do that for kids, right? But then, as a separate entity, like as a separate um, discussion, I think it's a good idea to give these baby boomers like the, the chance to... Like this education. Like, instead of them... like. Like it's them still being active. In I the 100% community. agree with you. Like, so I, that's I, what I my think... initial reaction was and, when I saw the and headline. Is connected to their grandchildren, their children? Like, yeah. As a separate discussion, like the what these kids are getting um, charged is probably like. It's robbery. Y- y- yeah, it's robbery. But you just don't like punch holes in someone else's initiative to like bring 
um, the old people back to be used. Because I feel like when you get to a certain age, you you feel like you're useless. Yeah. No. <laughs> like you're not really part of society anymore. Like like they just, I don't know. No, 100%. So when I first saw the headline, I was like, oh, that is so nice. Like that's amazing. And then I read and I was like, what? What? <laughs> All this backlash. But do you know what? I, I looked into it further. So this is what they're saying. We're talk- they're talking about the baby boomers specifically. And, a pa- and they're saying the baby boomers got free or extremely low education costs the first time as well. Okay. And oh. also they got handed everything. Their parents were the ones that worked hard and then they got pretty much given everything. What, so when the baby boomers the ones that lived through World War II? So I'm going to take you through a little educational All right, drop some about knowledge. every generation, not every generation, but starting from the baby boomers. Okay. okay. So baby boomers, hundreds. Oh, okay. One second. Baby boomers. They were the ones that were born between 1944 to 1964. So our parents age. Yeah. Would you say? No. I think 1944 to 1964. Uh, yeah. 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 But back end of it. So they're aged between 55 to 75. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> their generational. No. This is according to Carassa Marketing, by the way. Uh-huh. Their general um, generation size is about 60, 76 million right now. Yep. Um, media consumption. They are the highest consumers of traditional media. Yeah. Like television, radio, magazines. Talk back. Are they the talk back radio bloke? Yeah, yeah. I reckon. The one yeah. they just like to whinge on there? Maybe. Yeah. Talk back. Yep. Um, also maybe some Smooth FM, perhaps. I like Smooth FM. Yeah, I yeah, like Smooth, smooth FM. FM. Just to relax them after some talk back, um, <laughs> just like, yeah. yeah. They love, um, oh, but 90% of them have Facebook, mind you. Okay. Um, so they are trying to keep up with the times. <laughs> Banking habits, they prefer to Instagram go into. They're, they're behind still. <laughs> well, yeah, now they're behind. <laughs> We, we like that too. Um, they prefer to go into a branch, like to do transactions with a teller. <laughs> so do I. CJ, CJ's a baby boomer. He doesn't even know it. <laughs> I just figured I'm older than I am. <laughs> Shaping events. They're, they're post-World War II optimism, the Cold War and the hippie movement. So they lived through that sort of time, right? Yeah. I like, um, I like, I like a bit of the happy, happy, happy bush. <laughs> Bush. <laughs> I've never heard it called the Happy Bush before. <laughs> I, I was trying to think of something to say. <laughs> That's what they I don't know what he's quite referring to, but then I think I do. But then <laughs> I couldn't <laughs> think of it. <laughs> yep. Anyways, yep. Uh, the man, I was trying to be funny. That really got me. <laughs> <laughs> I went blank. <laughs> and oh I was my like, gosh. For some reason, Bush came in my head. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, anyways, so. What's next on their financial horizon? Unexpectedly, this generation is experiencing the highest growth in student loan debt. They have a belief that you should take care of your children enough to set them on the right course, but don't plan on leaving any inheritance. Who's this, Gen X? That's no, baby, baby boomers. Boom, baby boomers, yep. So the last one I'm is Gen Z. End, Gen Z. Last one is Gen Z. Is that your children? What year are you, Maxi? Three. 93. Okay, so this is 95 to 2015. I wonder if this relates to you or not. Currently aged four to 24. No. Um, no. Nope. <laughs> other nope. nicknames, I generation, post-millennials and homeland I generation. I post-Malone. <laughs> that doesn't relate to me so far. They equate <laughs> for <laughs> roughly 25% of the population. Media, the average Gen Zer received their first mobile at 10.3 years old. No way. Mm. Many of them no grew way. up playing with their parents' mobile phones or tablets. Yes. yes. They have grown up in a hyper-connected world and the smartphone is their preferred method of communication. Yep. On average, they spend at least three hours a day on a mobile device. Yep. Banking, this generation has seen the struggle of millennials and has adopted a more fiscally conservative approach. Hmm. They want to avoid debt and appreciate accounts on service that aid in the endeavor. Debit cards top their priority list, followed by mobile banking. Over fifty percent. The, these guys are four to twenty-four years old. And they're talking about how they approach debt. I guess the older ones. <laughs> I guess when you're four, you don't really have debt problems. 
Yeah, but, but your turns parents out the ones that are four to sixteen don't have much debt. Crazy. Nah. This generation is next like level. I yeah. know. Over fifty percent haven't even <laughs> entered a branch in the last few months. Shaping events. Of course, they've, they've got no money to go there for. Smartphones. <laughs> they've seen social media. A lot of these. Well, not a lot. Like some of these Gen Zers have never known a time where there's not been a country at war. That's interesting. Um, and seeing the financial struggles of their parents. And they, what's next on mm. the financial horizon for them is learning about personal finance. They've got a strong appetite for financial education and are opening savings accounts at younger ages than prior generations. I thought the next thing on their agenda would be puberty. You know, you know, that's, <laughs> you know, I think that's, this is a generalization, but it's, it's, I can see some of that in our kids. Mm. I can see like they're, they're saving money and I'm like. They're on our iPads. They're on our iPad, but like when just on the money part, like I just I go, they go, Dad, I want to buy this. I go, Where's your money? And they go, Here. <laughs> I go, Oh, okay. <laughs> well, let's go to the shops. <laughs> did you ask them where did you get that from? <laughs> I like they're nope. savvy. They'll go and pick up coins, and they're just like they they do the like um, la la la. the the ten cents. They do the ten cent bottle things. They collect bottles just so, and then over time they'll have like this big bag of plastic bottles and emma will go um to the recycling center and they'll just slowly build get money that way and you're like like there's a lot of patience to wait until you have the money to buy something i'm like i'm pretty impressed yeah i'm pretty pretty impressed i didn't think uh 100 percent. it's good parenting what do you reckon is the best generation (laughs) 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 it might be just smart kids (laughs) okay so what is so so i forgot what this was about Gen, every, I think all gen. Oh, it's because of the baby boomers getting education for very cheap cost. Look, I think it's two different discussions, right? Stop poking holes in someone. Else. Like if someone's getting, I don't know. Uh, I I'm agree with you. It. Well said, Dev. I reckon. He didn't say, I didn't say anything. <laughs> he, he didn't make a sentence there. He just said some general words and moved on. Well, that shows there. how long we've been married. Um, hey, good work. Good work, mate. Yeah. Yeah, let them do what. Let them do that, and yes, they do need to sort out the sh- the younger age student yes. fees and everything. But that doesn't mean you have to then have a go at the actual older generation. Yeah, because because they're getting it too. Yeah. What, what do you, do you reckon, think, Max? Um, I don't know. I'm kind of conflicted. Okay. I guess so what I don't understand is if if uh, it's like if you make a CD right and you sell it to some people for a lot of money and then you sell it to other people for very cheap. That's like fine because it's not taking anything away from the people you're spend who are, the people that are willing to spend a lot on it. You're not taking anything away from them. If the younger generation are paying a lot of money to fund the teachers, which are then teaching people for not a lot of money, then obviously that doesn't make sense. Uh-huh. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't, I don't know what, if that means, the resource, obviously, the resources they have. If they're saying that the old people, these like the uh, old old people, that feel bad. Okay, whatever. The old people. If the old Just people say can older. Have, like pay ten dollars per credit, and that then pays the university like cost value, like fair enough, that's cool. But that's then absolutely insane that they're being tar- charged fifty times more. Yeah. Yeah. So just that's- because they know they can. <coughs> yeah. They say, you know I mean? how like, is it that universities can afford to let them take $10 credit classes, but somehow must charge other students hundreds? Like it means they, the actual cost of it is minute to what they're charging, basically. Because yeah. what I'd imagine is like, obviously to build a university into, like when I said about the CD, like all the production cost that goes into making a CD, like all the music and stuff behind it is obviously a very big cost. And then you say, we expect X amount of people to buy this CD because they really want it and really need it. So you say, we're going to set it for £10, we expect to sell... A million of them, right? So we're going to make 10 million pounds or 10 million dollars and it costs us 8 million dollars to produce it all. And that'd be quite insane, but whatever, yeah? But then if then someone comes along and says they don't really want it that bad, like they just want it out of curiosity, we'll give it to them for like 10 cent. That's not a big deal because we understand that it doesn't take much more resource because it's like we've done all the production costs, we've done our business case, we've sold it to the people that need it. There's people here that don't really need it, but it's just nice of them to have it. So we'll give it them for very cheap. Yeah. That's cool. But it's just then if these if you come in, that person that like taking that C D, 
it's not a CD anymore. It's like a whole, it's a theater show, for instance. Like they then have to go out and do the theater show, which means when they come in to pay for that theater show, like they're not paying as much as uh, what it costs to hire the people to be there, which means the money has to come from the other customers, which means oh, you have to then put okay. more cost onto the other customers to keep 35 minute warning. Yeah, I get what you're so saying. So the kids are paying for the benefit for these baby boomers. Baby boomers to get well, the benefit. I don't. I don't fully know how the system works, but the, the, you can argue that's what's happening. Yeah. You know, like that could be happening. Which that's outrageous. I think. Oh, so this one man. last tweet from EJ Gibney to this. He goes, "One point four trillion in student loan debt. The average grad needs twenty one years to pay off their loans. Textbooks alone cost into the thousands over a four year degree. But sure, let grandpa take." intro to email for less than the cost of a packet of pens sorry just had to say that word because it's funny are you when you say hello to uh, a friend that's a girl are you cheek to cheek or are you lip to cheek <laughs> No. Which cheeks? Cheek to cheek. <laughs> no, Maxie. Cheek to cheek. <laughs> <laughs> no, Maxie. <laughs> that was too quick. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> See, they love those ones. <laughs> too quick. Lightning. Are you, um... Are you a cheek to cheek kind of person, or I, I'm I'm awkward, I think, because I don't know what I'm doing, and then <laughs> I feel like, what happens is I'm in so many situations where sometimes they take the initiative, like if. Sometimes I'm like the new guy and they take the initiative and I follow their rules. But then there's a lot of situations where I'm the one that's meant to be making the yeah. initiative, taking the initiative myself. But I get confused of what's when I'm meant to be doing it. So like, I'll, <laughs> I don't know, I just stand and so wait. Every, like, day, wait. every day you go into the office <laughs> and you go out to people all the time. Like, kisses. I meet new people all the time. And then I'll meet a lot. Like normally when I meet someone for the first time, I always just shake hands. Like if I don't, man, woman, whatever. But then when I get to know them like if i met them even just twice and if they work with the company like the organization i volunteer for the human aspect if they're there then i'll always hug the girl once i've met her once okay but there's so many new people i forget who i've met once <laughs> and who i've met first so i could have met three girls for the first time on the monday and then the same three were coming on the wednesday but i don't know which ones i've met that's so I shake quite, one hand. I feel like one <laughs> meeting is quite... What's work? A modeling agency is <laughs> women are just coming in and out. But I feel like one time is quite <laughs> train. quite a, a short amount of time to be to be on the hugging. Oh, you reckon this should be a... A time period. A time period. Or, or it, it completely depends on like the, energy. the way we've met. Yeah. And the, like the vibe in where the we vibe. work is like we're all friendly. We don't feel like colleagues. We feel like a group of friends. Right. So you want them, let them. It's weird if I hug everybody else and then shake their hand. Yeah. Like I go around yeah. the room saying bye. I hug, hug, and I'm like, oh, you're new. You have a handshake. <laughs> I have, I have, <laughs> I have that for guys. I have that for guys. So like, if I am not like, if I don't know the guy, it's just sort of like a handshake, right? But if you, if I'm like mm. pretty much like fam with this guy, I'll come in, I'll grab him. And it'll be like a yeah. Hug. So with the, a... I'm interested in the boys, the boys, the boys, <laughs> like, oh, the boys yeah, shake. So you've don't got lie, like it's a bit stuff like <laughs> beam, 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 beam. What's that? What's that? Who's that's that? Who's that? Who 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 are you? Who's that? LL Cool J. What are you doing? No, just in general, it's like, oh hey bro. <laughs> it's there's you there's too many movements. It's it's either it's either the thumb like what's that? What do you call that handshake when you're we like just put our hands there, just give each other a hug in the back. That's it. Yeah, so do you like yeah, but, this? But it's like, like an arm wrestle. An arm wrestle yeah, handshake. Yeah, it's a like arm wrestle. Yeah, yes, yes. Which, which leads to a hug. That's so it. who pulls who in? They like, all come saying, together. Is yeah. it like a macho thing? Like you pull each other in. Mm. But like, you and know... Unless you're Donald Trump, <laughs> normally you put each other in. <laughs> but, you know you know if it's like, if one person is more so into you or something. So you don't do this one? Where you link think, give me, like this. No, mate. We're not 1980s. No, like... No, mm. no. We're, we're, not Le we're not LeBron James has got That's different handshakes for every for friend. Listeners, she's, Emma's proposing you do it like a thumb walk. <laughs> <laughs> like this. Right. Hey, bro. No, this is not. I've seen that. No. That's That's Le Le <gasps> LeBron James has got a different handshake of every teammate. I know We just that. have one handshake for all our friends. Yeah. We had one but one is there like an Aussie hug. version? That's the Aussie version. Then there's an English version. Then there's a... Do you yeah. know what I mean? So, Max, you do nah, the... I think everyone... I think the most common is... Um, arm wrestle like arm slap, wrestle do? yep hold and then pull in yep. yeah okay go that's the most universal and pull in and like... when you pull in do you do, do you do the tap on the back oh yeah yeah 
100%. Oh, you have to. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got, you got to be manly. Yeah. So if do you don't do it, the tap on the back, tap, then it's bomb, like bomb. you're like... Uh. And if you're really close, you, just you, you get a slap on the bum. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you're really close, if I'm like... No, no, like say you like, do it and the other person doesn't even go, doesn't even put their hand up. They just go in like this. Is that weird? Like, what's wrong with you? No, like, then there's like he doesn't... doesn't like you. He doesn't like you. Oh, uh, rules. Look at these rules. He doesn't like you. Yeah. If, he, if, he's not, if he's not putting like, you know, he's like opening up, like it's like sort of you're being vulnerable there, right? Mm. If he's just like staying front on, you're sort of like, oh, well, well. Yeah. he's okay. got his walls up. Well, I just thought something, Dev. Yeah. I, I mean, I know this is, I've never done it to someone that's significantly taller than me. Yeah. How's, have you done it to somebody that's significantly taller All than me? All of you? my no, mates He was going to say, how does it feel doing it as a short person? <laughs> so do, you, do you just rest your head on their chest? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I do. It's sort of like, it's sort of like, bop, bop. Yeah, how you going, bud? But yeah, but have you had short people turn, do I it to you? I turn my head. I turn my head. I turn my you head. You have to turn your head when you're a short yeah. person. Yeah, because you, you don't want to be. What? You don't want to be facing right? face the chest. And you put your head on their chest. Yeah. And then and they, they hold the back of your head. See, <laughs> 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 don't laugh. <laughs> you were the, you were like when Patrick used to do it to you. I had to, man. The guy's a giant. <laughs> my old mate was six two. Is he six two? Yeah, something like that. He's like, not a giant, you, by the way. Compared to us, yeah, he he, you disappear, you disappear for a bit, and you go, oh, I'm back, I'm back now, and he will pull you in because you're so much bigger. Like the pull in, like it's him basically pulling you in yeah. <laughs> for the hug. You're like, okay, man. you know what used to get me the the double kiss. What? Oh, with girls. The double kiss with the girls. Yeah. You kiss and then you're like, you're pulling away and then they bring you in for the other cheek. You go, oh, okay, okay we're doing this. It, it depends on who it is. If it's a European girl, she'll go for the double kiss. Yeah. yeah. But for not all European girls. Like like Maltese, oh. Italian. English girls, not so much, right? Mm, hmm? No. Yeah. English girls aren't. Yeah, English girls is one because I don't give Emma kisses one kiss on the cheek. One. Yeah. yeah. But most European girls would go to double. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And every now and then a French I heard, I heard the French girls is a... Is a <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it is. Yes, you get French, the tri- French yes, is the you double get the triple well. kiss. <laughs> oh, yeah, French is triple. Oh. I, heard, I heard French... It used to be single in France. Oh. Then it went double. And then it went triple. Now it's... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where he's Now going. it's what? <laughs> Where it's going. Where I don't you? know. Where it's going you? to a dirty place it's for going. sure. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maxie's gone. I just saw. Maxie's <laughs> Matt, get your mind out of the gutter. It was an action. He was starting to do an action, an action and he stopped. <laughs> it was like, you had to turn the headlights or something. <laughs> oh, <laughs> is that what he was no, doing? I don't think so. Oh, oh. man. Okay, so a friend of mine posted this on my son's um, hip hop dancing Facebook page thingy. And I was like, wow, I want to talk about it. So 2024 Olympics, guess what they might be adding as an Olympic sport? Break dancing. Break dancing. Break dancing. That'd be what? <laughs> right? Like, oh, it's not called break dancing, sorry, anymore. It's called breaking, apparently. Oh. Us Gen Ys. Gen Y? Did we say we are? Us know. millennials yeah. aren't is, is quite breaking, up to it. Is breaking an Olympic sport? Well, that's what's going to be. So, look. Not yet. The IOC yeah. announced Tuesday that skateboarding, yeah. sport climbing, and surfing were provisionally added to the 2024 Olympic program. Cool. Yep. They're going to be debuted in Tokyo 2020, but um, they're not assured places um, on the Olympic program beyond that. So I guess it's like, we'll see how it goes. Olympic. What does the Olympic stand for? I, I feel like um, I feel like breakdancing shouldn't. What is the Olympics? What, are the, what does it mean to the people Olympics? Well, it says they contribute to making the program like more gender balanced, more in touch with the younger people, more urban, um, trying to connect the younger generation to like watch the Olympics. Like, do you reckon they do? 
The Olympic. The younger generation. Um, but they watch Usain Bolt. Yeah, yeah they yeah. do watch Usain. That's true. I reckon they only watch uh, like the. I reckon athletics they have is a attention span for 100 meters, maybe 200 meters. That's a bit long though. What's that like? 20 <laughs> seconds sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you got to remember this: people only watch the things they're interested in. Yes. So you have some people. Interested well, well, okay, in swimming, so if the Olympics swimming. come on, what what kind of stuff do you guys watch? Well, I love the obviously the hundred meters. I love the diving. Diving's cool. You I love, love the gymnastics. The my the colleague, gym. my I colleague who works with me in my company now, he was the ex like silver, so he was second best in Europe for diving. Wow. Wow. That's impressive. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's that's a good claim to fame. Um yeah. I love yeah, gymnastics. Yeah, gymnastics. Yeah, gymnastics is cool. Yeah. Some of those gymnastics big. is the craziest sport. Like, yeah, I think they're like the the ultimate athletes basically. Crazy. Yeah. Like some of those guys seeing what they do is just phenomenal. Nice. Even the young ladies. I guess the only thing gymnastics might not have is like the like long distance stamina kind of thing. But otherwise, like every kind of way you can measure fitness, yeah, they have to be able to do it. Like strength, balance, flexibility, like yeah. explosive power, like everything. It's crazy. Yeah. It's just all muscle. Yeah. I reckon a lot of the athletics are awesome to watch. High jump, hurdles. I love the hurdles. I don't mind the triple jump. Relay. Okay, Emma, maybe best for you. Is there anything that you don't like watching? Ah, yes. That is, that's probably Do a smaller list. Table I'm not... tennis. I love mm, table see, tennis. I, I don't... love table tennis. I don't. I l- oh, man. That's there is so much skill. Waste sk- of time. That is so much skill in table tennis. There I is like so it, but I don't. Tennis. Do you go, so, like, if it's on, would you go, yes, yeah, table tennis, going to watch that one? What, what? Like, if you, you know how sometimes you have the options. So what you want to watch, like when you go on the TV? Yeah. Would you go take, like, what would you If the Olympics were choose? here, I'd, w- I'd go watch uh, table tennis. Would you? Even, um... The Olympics ba- were here. Yeah, Again. but I was working. Oh. If it came... Um, <laughs> badminton. How were you working? Another. What do you mean? Oh. You weren't working. He worked working. at the Olympics. I worked at the Olympics. You were a kid. What did you do? I picked up rubbish. I worked for That's a clean... <laughs> he got paid for it. I got paid heaps. Oh, I, got, I was getting paid like um, forty dollars an hour. Damn. What? Yeah, it was ridiculous. They were throwing money at people at the Olympics. Were they? Yeah. Yeah. And you had to pick it up. Yeah, I had to pick them up. <laughs> 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 this is how much you're worth. <laughs> I'll pick it up. Um, yeah, you know, watch... that's a good. That's a good way to pay someone that picks up litter, though. If you just like keep it in a crisp packet and scatter <laughs> them around, and then to get your money, you better go get it. <laughs> Go get your money, boy. And it's just geotagged. So you got this like GPS and you <laughs> you got to go to these areas and on the way, pick up all the rubbish to get your pay packet. Yeah. Um, yeah, badminton. Badminton, I'd love to watch. Badminton. Yeah. Yeah. That's they, it. Are, they're, they are pretty impressive to watch, to be honest. They're, when I think of badminton, my first thought is always back to my school days. I'm like, that's a boring sport. Wooden rackets. And when you watch them play it like... <laughs> what? Wooden rackets. I like the volleyball. I didn't have wooden rackets. <laughs> Old school wooden Old rackets. school. Badminton. Like, I, I imagine. Uh, anyway. I enjoy water polo as well. <laughs> oh. How's that, how's that a sport in the Olympics? What? And then... No, like, you have also, to be pretty the, um, fit to do water what's polo. The, um, not water polo. What's the... Um, Rowing. The, one the horses. Oh. The horses. Yeah, that's just weird. Equestrian. Equestrian, yeah. If that's in the Olympics, I no, think but you have a, to be quite uh, fit for that as well. Any well, of the sport, horse does at least. Any of a sport can be in the Olympics. They have to have a good core, I think. Who does? The horse. Equestrians. The horse or the riders? The rider. What they have to have core. And actually, I think it's harder than you think because the thigh muscles—they're not sat down. They're actually like um, a lot of the time they're like. What do you call it? Like, it's probably harder than I think, but I bet it's not as hard as racing Usain Bolt in 100 meters. If we do have breaking in the Olympics, we're going to be watching people with the names like Bad and Matty, Senorita Carlota, and Kenny G. Kenny G, <laughs> the saxophone. Yeah. Uh, sax- do, 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 do. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I think it's a provisional and. They're gonna see how it goes. Type see, thing. I don't really oh, I'm see saying if is a if sport. Uh, questions in there, break dancing should definitely be in there. But that opens the door for so many sports. I mean, how do you judge it? How do you judge like break dancing? You can't. But like, but like gymnastics. 
Well, you can't, <laughs> but someone can. You know, no, gymnastics, <laughs> they, 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 what do you mean? They score gymnastics. Just, yeah, so that they'll be judging breakdancing the similar way to gymnastics. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's but what then I'm saying. I, but then you could do any genre of dancing, really. So gymnastics is basically public opinion. Could you imagine voguing in the... <laughs> voguing is voguing. like... Voguing. No, but oh. I think they said no, like voguing. with break no, dance, with breaking... Sun comes on. <laughs> yeah, but I was going like, to say, maybe they don't of... cast it as dance anymore. It's breaking. It's like a weird form of gymnastics. I guess it's yeah, got some athletic... Yeah, because yeah, they have to be athletic. quite athletic, athletic is, is strong. It, breaking is a weird form of gymnastics. It is. Because some of the guys, you see them, and they're doing like um, breakdancing moves. Like, imagine doing... No, we can't do that move, like where they've got their legs in the air and they're on like one arm or whatever. That's pretty... They have to have a very strong core. All right, I'm interested now. You've intrigued me, guys. I want to see breakdancing. They do backflips and double flips and all sorts. Yes. Very true. I guess they're not going to have battles or anything, though, eh? Can you imagine the music? There'll be a lot of beeps during the songs. <laughs> I think every single one has to start with DJ, drop the beat. <laughs> <laughs> and then they start. <laughs> Otherwise, it's not breaking. <laughs> they have to have one section that goes back to like the old school. And you know the gymnastics, how they have, <laughs> their, hands, they have their hands in the air? The B-boys have to go like that. They have to cross their arms <laughs> and then put a pose. That's their finishing move. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he stumbled a little bit. That's a mark off. <laughs> <laughs> He's lent the wrong way. all right everyone thanks for watching this week's episode of the b-side word make sure if you enjoyed it to hit that like button if you want to see more hit that subscribe and drop us your thoughts in the comments down below hit the bell hit the bell hit the bell hit the bell. bell